Hi, third graders, Mrs. Peters here, and I want to spend a few minutes with you today uh, doing some thinking about unit fractions. So here is our vocabulary card, and it explains that a unit fraction is a fraction with a numerator of one. And there are four examples of fractions there that all have a numerator of one, which make them a unit fraction. During the month of November, we collected fraction pieces. We collected halves, fourths, and eighths, and those were all unit fractions. Now, let's think about the word numerator, because we know in a unit fraction, it, the numerator has to be one. So the numerator is the top number in a fraction, which shows how many equal parts are to be counted. It can also be called the dividend. Now, if you look here, the only unit or fraction in this example is this one. It is the one half. It is a unit fraction. But they all have numerators because the numerator is that top number. Now, during the month of November, we collected unit fractions. And of course, we know that uh, they don't come, they're not the same size. And in fact, my, I'm going to go down here for a minute. I made some a little bit bigger here on the left. And what my students thought is that it was interesting how um, the bigger the denominator or the number on the bottom got, the smaller the piece got. And I think it was Marshall in my class said, well, you know, that bottom number tells you how many pieces something is broken into. So obviously, um, if it gets broken into more pieces, the pieces are going to get smaller. And I was like, yep, that is right on. So let's go back up and take a look at some of the collecting that we've done. And I'm going to zoom in and I want us to take a look at our halves. So um, in my class, we collected this many halves. Every time we would collect one, we would bring it up here and we would put it on the line. So we collected in the month of November, one, two, three, four, five, one halves. And you can see on the bottom that we named those places on the number line. We called this place one half. And then when we collected a second half, we then had two halves. We collected another half and now we have three halves. We collected another half and we had four halves. And then we collected another half. Hmm. What do you think these numbers will be? What could you replace the question mark with? What will that fraction be? Well, let's think. We still have halves. Notice that that bottom number has not changed. We are still collecting halves. But we now have, we had four of them, and we added another half. So we now have five. So if you said that that point on the number line would be marked five halves because we have one, two, three, four, five halves, you are exactly right. So now let's go down and take a look at the force that we've collected. Let's see, let's count them. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths. Ah, we've collected six one fourth pieces. So if we look here, we labeled these points on the number line, one fourth, we added one and we got two fourths. We added another and we got three fourths. We added another and we got four fourths. We added another and we got five fourths. And then we added another. What do you think that fraction is going to look like? Well, again, our denominator, that bottom number, does not change. It's the top number, that counting number, <clears throat> excuse me, that changes, and we go from five to six. So good work. So I want to talk to you a little bit. Let me get back out. I want to talk to you about what an equivalent fraction is. And it's one of the things about fractions that just makes them really interesting and can make them a little bit challenging. Well, an equivalent fraction is when the same amount it's called something different. So in this model, there is a, a model that's shared into six pieces with lines. And, and two of those are shaded in with black. 
Over here, they've taken some lines and shared it into one, two, three parts, and one of those parts is shaded in. So if you look at that, they both have the same number of squares shaded in. It's the same amount. But in one case, it's called two sixths, and in another case, it's called one third. So um, those are equivalent fractions. Here's an, another example that's a little more similar to what we've been doing. So this is on a bar, and you can see half of it is shaded in, and there's my half. Here, it's been broken into four parts, and two of them are shaded in, so it's two fourths. And here, it's been the same amount, it's been broken into th six parts, and three are shaded in. So we could say that one half, two fourths, and three sixths are equivalent fractions. A really interesting idea, and we're going to be working a lot on it in third grade. So it's two or more different fractions that represent the same quantity. I also like to think of them as representing the same point on the number line. So speaking of number lines, let's go back. I have three new number lines, and you can see that I have marked each of them with the whole numbers one and two. Start with zero, one, and two. So I'm going to take some halves and I am going to slide them over. And let's see how many halves it takes to get to one. Well, it took two halves, which shouldn't be surprising because it's a half, which means that between zero and one, we split it into two parts. And it took two of them to get there. So now let's think about one fourth. I'm going to put one over here. And let's stop and think think. Hmm. I wonder how many it's going to take to fill the space between zero and one. What do you think? Now that you've tried, uh, made an estimate, let's move another few over. There's two and there's three. Hmm. I'll give you a chance if you want to to answer the question again. Okay, if you said four, you were correct. That space, it took four one-fourths to get to one. All right, well, what do you think about the eights? Let's drag one over and start. How many one-eighth pieces do you think that it's going to take to get to one? Well, let's give it a try. So there's two, there's three. We'll get them lined up a little bit better. Fractions, we need to be precise. So we have three so far. There is four. There is five and six and seven. Hmm, how is your thinking? And eight. Yep, it took eight one-eighths to get to one. Now I am going to take this little line and I'm gonna slide it over here and I'm gonna line it up right at the same point on those number lines. Now we can say that those fraction amounts, and I'm actually gonna do a little snipping here, I would like to snip this so we can write on it. And let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So these are, we can name these. This is two halves. Okay, so I'm going to get a writing tool. Make it a little bit smaller. So we had one, two halves. So that point on the number line is what we would call two halves. And we can say that it is equal to one, two, three, four fourths because they cover the same amount. So those are equivalent fractions. What other equivalent fractions do you see? Well, let's see if I take four fourths, what is it equivalent to? 
Yep, you can see it took eight one-eighths to get to that. So there it is. Those are equivalent fractions. So let's make that go away. And let's move our line again. What if I slide that line down to this point? Ah, now it's at about the same point on the number line. Do you see any other equivalent fractions? Let's do a little snipping again. There we go, make it a little bit bigger. So here we have two fourths, one, two. So I'm gonna write that as two, one, two, two one fourths. And if we look down here at the eighths, how many one eighths does it take to match that point or be the same amount. And if you said four, you are correct. So we would say that two one fourths is equivalent to four one eighths. All right, well, thanks for listening. Nice job and look forward to learning a lot more about fractions.